Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Rest. Hope you guys are doing well today. We are returning with the watches that I found in the Delta lounges as I was traveling. So this weekend I did a little bit of traveling and so I had an opportunity to go into one of the Delta lounges. And obviously this is a series that we did um, over a year ago where we would talk about some of the watches that we saw on the wrists of travelers that we saw in the airport. Um, traveling sort of <laughs> was declined over the last couple of years or last year. So uh, we weren't able to continue the series, but we are back because I did travel this weekend with some more watches. Um, and for the most part, it was a fairly average um, sort of day. I will say that I felt like I saw um, fairly, fairly basic, <laughs> this sounds really bad, but more, more, um, more sort of average watches. It wasn't anything interesting super super uh, crazy that I saw so, sort of like it did in some of the other videos like I remember I think I saw a Richard Mille that ended up being a fake I, I think I saw a, a really cool uh, Royal Oak once um, so these watches are not something like that but it was nice to get back into the series and to be able to do some watch spotting at the airport so just to jump straight in um, the first thing that I saw on <laughs> Too many people's wrists were smart watches. Um, it was actually very difficult for me to actually see some mechanical watches that people were wearing. I, I, I obviously looked at every, just about everyone's wrist, and for some reason, all I saw was smart watches. And I think that shows smart watches have its utility. Are they a watch? I argue that they're not really a watch. It's just a piece of technology. But I think it shows that um, mechanical watches are. Um, not something that everyone is going to like. Um, they're going to go for the smartwatch because it has added health benefits. It, it um, gives you notifications from your phone. There are benefits that they see from those as opposed to something like a watch. So it's, it's an important reminder to watch companies that they are going to have to do something quite revolutionary or quite interesting in order to um, continue to um, to have a have some sort of impact on on the wrists of, of this new generation i didn't actually see anything like a, like any any smart watches from hublot or or Todd Coyer. it was basically all apple watches there were some Sam, samsung related smart watches as well the next thing i saw and this was really cool because it is a new piece that was released and that was one of the new Todd Coyer aqua racers uh, the the the, the um, Tug Heuer Aqua Racer Professional 300. This was the black version, so very understated. Black dial, black bezel with really cool white um, applied hour markers. This is the new version of the Aqua Racer, which has um, a, a, a different case design to some of the other other watches that you've seen. Really nice second hand with a yellow yellow tip, automatic written in yellow, and date at six o'clock. I really love this watch. It was on a, a gentleman in a fairly you know, relatively sporty um, outfit, so it wasn't anything too, um, too, uh, you know, wasn't with a suit or anything like that. It was just someone who's wearing shorts and a t-shirt sort of thing. But it's a good, good watch to, to go into, and I actually think this is a really nice entry-level piece. I'm actually looking at my 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 computer over here, and um, the black version of this watch just sold out, <laughs> which I think shows this is a really good iteration from Tagore, and I think is a really important part about their new releases of 2021. Retails for about 3,000 um, US dollars, so a relatively af affordable, nice entry level into sort of um, sort of uh, sportier watches um, from these companies. Um, running on the caliber 5 from from Todd Coyer, so workhorse ETA based movement. I just really love this 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 little watch from Todd Coyer. I think it was a really great um, place for them to go. Moving forward, I saw a really cool Breitling chronograph. This was the Super Ocean Heritage B01 chronograph. It was the 44 millimeter um, chronograph that is not the Navitimer, which a lot of people think of when you think of Breitling and chronographs. This was a Super Ocean. Um, chronometer watch from from Breitling. It was the stainless steel version with a blue bezel and blue dial, sort of like a sunburst dial. So at different lights, it shone really nicely. It's actually the the sunburst what was what caught my eye. Um, <clears throat> I saw a lot of fashion watches, so I, I was used to seeing quite a bit of color. But the sunburst of the this <clears throat> excuse me of this Breitling really caught my eye on this person's wrist. Again, sportier outfits. Nothing not, wasn't being worn with a suit or anything like that. But it's a really awesome watch. Um, Super Ocean was released in the 1950s, um, and this is sort of to commemorate, or the new line is sort of commemorating those historical watches that they created. Um, really interesting hours hand and, and, and uh, minutes hand, sort of, so it's got a sword hand for its minutes hand and sort of like an arrow, but a different type of arrow for the, for the, for the hours. Date kind of between four and five o'clock, no cyclops. Um, 
sort of silver silver subdials for the seconds and also the chronograph subdials. Um, and it comes on a mesh bracelet. This person was wearing it on a uh, just on a, on a leather strap, which I thought was quite nice. Very simple brown strap um, was, was pretty interesting. Um, Self-winding automatic movement. Um, it's the Breitling B01, so in-house manufacturer movement. Um, it's a big piece. It's 44 millimeters, um, but a really cool piece to, to, to be worn. I think this is a nice watch to actually wear when traveling because it's very easy, it's very legible. You know, you might be in dark cabins in, in your planes. And so it's very legible if you look at, a, look at it on your wrist. I think the luminescent material on this is also quite bright. So it's a nice, nice piece to be, to be worn and it was a pleasure to see on someone's wrist. Okay, and then the last watch I wanted to talk about was actually as I was exiting um, my, I guess my destination airport. And this was the, uh, a really um, sort of unique Cartier watch. This was the uh, Pacha de Cartier, which was, um, which is a it's, a, it's a round watch, but sort of has, it, it, when I look at it, it looks like it has sort of a square feel to it. Um, but basically in 1985, Cartier released um, the Pacha de Cartier, and they've come out with a new line of watches, which are to bring some sort of elegant, um, elegant, uh, elegant watchmaking with these sort of, um, very interesting elements to it. So um, this was on a gentleman's wrist. He was actually wearing um, a very, very simple outfit. It wasn't anything, anything too, too crazy, but it was um, just a, just a gray suit, white shirt, um, no tie or anything like that. And he had this really elegant uh, Cartier on, on his wrist here. So I'm going to guess that it was a 41 millimeter version of this. Um, this is a, that's a total guess. It was a gentleman who was wearing it, so I'm going to guess that he would probably go for a 30, 41 millimeter watch. I don't know much about him, but. Um, so this is actually a stainless steel uh, cased and bracelet watch that um, has obviously a round dial, but a very pointed uh, crown that uh, screws on and off. And then what you actually have is you don't have lugs for this watch. The bracelet sort of integrates on two separate bars on the uh, 12 o'clock and six o'clock. And then you have this really interesting stainless steel um, case to it. When you flip the watch over, it actually has a display case back. And so you see this um, very simple stainless steel colored, um, colored movement with a nicely signed uh, router fr uh, from, from Cartier. Um, and and um, then when you look at the dial, you have um, indications for three, six, nine, and 12, which is sort of what caught my eye. Um, as I was looking at people, as this, at this gentleman's wrist, the 36912 really caught my eye. Initially, I thought it was a fashion watch, but then realized it was a Cartier. You have a date between three and six o'clock, and you have a blued hours and minutes hand. You, the tracker for the, for the um, minutes, the minute indicators, is actually in a square form, which I think is where I get that sort of aesthetic, that it's, that it's um, sort of a, a, uh, um, a, sort of like a square elements to it for some reason. The watch itself is 41 millimeters in diameter, so fairly fairly um, large, but wear, can wear uh, quite nicely. And I think it's a very elegant piece. It's running on the caliber 1847 MC movement from Cartier. Uh, a, a real uh, beautiful dress watch and something that I think you can maybe get away with it being a little bit more sporty, being stainless steel. Um, this watch retails for about 7,000 US dollars. So not, not cheap, not, not too, too expensive, um, but an elegant place within Cartier and not something that maybe, you know, people go for the Cartier tank and the uh, Ballon Bleu, but they don't really, you don't really see these too often. So it was nice to see this one as well. Uh, I absolutely enjoyed uh, this trip. Uh, it was, it was uh, on a personal note, it was a very fun trip for me, but I also just enjoyed being able to see some more watches in these, in, in these airports. It was a, it's one of my favorite series that we've done on this channel, but also on our website. Um, and so it was, it was really fun to, to, to do this and, and obviously to record this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you've done any traveling in the last couple, couple weeks or months and whether or not um, you like some of these pieces. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, let me know what your, your travel companion is when it comes to watches. I was personally wearing a Vacheron Constantin 4963. Um, I've really fallen in love with this piece. It's a really elegant, beautiful dress watch that fits sort of my aesthetic. So I really loved wearing that piece. 
If you haven't seen some of our other videos where we've gone over watches that we've seen in the Delta lounges, or if you haven't seen some of our other videos where we've where we cover a range of topics, everything from uh, watchmaking to um, to uh, new watch releases, vintage to modern, we really cover it all. So head over to our channel. You can check out some of our, of our videos. Um, and while you're there, be, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like those types of videos. There's an editorial, there's an article in the editorial section of our website for this video. So be sure to head over there. You can check that out, lifeonthewrist.com. If you wouldn't mind hitting that like button for us, um, it really does help us out with our YouTube analytics. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And until next time.